Burton, aka Mr. Short Dollar himself, doing a quick live feed this evening. I just got in from the office. Uh, you guys know it's the beginning of tax season. I'm a tax accountant, and we had a um, uh, just want to do a quick live feed to talk about uh, the top how to avoid the uh, small business tax audit triggers. Okay, you have a lot of things that you know start audits up with small businesses, and all er, each and every year we get calls all the time about people that's getting audited because you know they have put something on a tax return that they thought was right they heard was right or they wish was right and what i want to do a quick live feed tonight guys discuss you know how to avoid small business tax audit triggers right now we're streaming live on facebook youtube instagram linkedin TikTok, and uh twitter right now um real quick give a quick disclaimer i go over anything as far as i see in in the TikTok. somebody asked about new grants for veterans I'll, after we talk about discussion in regards to the uh, small business uh, audit tax triggers, I'll revisit everything. Anybody got any questions outside? I, I'll open the floor up to answer any questions that anybody may have. But right now, I want to discuss some things that always, you know, was probably some of the most common uh, triggers that I've seen for our small business audits over the past 20 years. And uh, one of some a lot of these things actually I can see right in the nail soon a, a new client or even the current client may give us their financial statements. And I'm like, you sure this right? Now I can all take what you give me. You sign, you know, the the the, the agreement that these items are correct. You've got your PL statements, um, or your expense listings and everything like that. We're gonna take that information from you. But at the end of the day, that's just you know to protect us. But you know, some things I can just see glaring, like, hey man, this doesn't look right. So what I want to do again, share these information, share the information with you guys. Again, we're talking about um, how to avoid small business tax audit triggers. Again, this is Mr. Short Dog, where we talk about personal finance, business, entrepreneurship, and investing. And one of the first things that trigger audits uh, with small businesses is fa failure to report all your income. Here's the problem with um, uh, th that comes up a lot of times. A lot of times when you have a small business and you're doing different different jobs or different things a lot of times you may have get you know a 1099 or you may have signed up as an independent contractor for a particular business um the issue comes up you may have forgot you gave them the w-9 and at the end of the year they'll issue out a 1099 or 1099 nec as an independent contractor you know three five ten thousand you may not necessarily remember the job because you just worked for them for a couple weeks to a gig here and now or you may have done several jobs and you just don't remember everything you've done the issue comes up you go to try to file your taxes yourself or go to your accountant you forgot all the information because you haven't been maintaining proper books which is not uncommon for small businesses and taxes are filed taxes are submitted you're you know living life everything's fine you know maybe six seven months after you filed it, you get a letter from the irs saying that you, your income is understated because you didn't report a 1099 that was issued out to you um you may have received a 1099 late or you may not receive a 1099 at all it's not uncommon because what we move sometimes you know people have made uh put the wrong address on the 1099 when they mail it out to you so you might didn't receive it but they did report it to the irs that they did pay you to do a certain assignment a certain gig and your income is understated by you know like we just said three five ten thousand dollars what is that what happened with that because it's understated now you may have a tax liability and it happens all the time with well, that tax liability or if it's like a trend or certain things or if that happens you may get a letter from the irs let me get a, let me back up a little bit before i you know go too deep into it when we just to uh to explain what a tax audit is what a tax audit is is when the irs reaches out to you uh in regards to the actual information that you submitted to them on your tax return and they just want to verify what you have um audits are very rare now if you've been listening to the news the irs has been ramping up the actual amount of audits that they want uh, wanted to do they said they were going to increase them about 50 50 percent back in um 2022 and they just hired another 
is it 50 or 80,000 agents they're looking to have um, uh, to work on audits and do different uh, customer service, different other things with, with the IRS. Um, but it still rarely happens in proportion to the amount of people that actually file their taxes. So audits rarely happen. The issue that comes up is right now, especially you know, in 2023, uh, you have artificial intelligence that actual uh, beats the human eye. You know, I'm 20 years in the game. And I remember the first couple of years, you know, it was maybe just like a random selection, you know, and they may do a little tumble wheel and actually pick somebody for an audit. <laughs> but what's happened now, everything's based on artificial intelligence. They're looking at trends. They're basing everything. The computers are looking at industries, industry, common industry expenses, uh, things that are really out of proportion in regards to certain things, looking at trends that you may have from, from, from one year to the other. And all those things are taken into consideration now, so it's a lot easier now to get audited because uh, the whole human aspect of it is out of the way. But what I want to do again is just share some of my common, uh, some of the common things that I've seen that have triggered uh, audits with small businesses, and also you know at the end of it also kind of just give you a little guidance in regards to if you do get that letter from the IRS, you know not to panic, but what you you know give you you know some common steps in regards to what you should take just in case you receive it. Excuse me, but again the first thing. They usually trigger audit in small businesses is um, failing to report all your income. A lot of times, I know you, you see so many things on the the, uh, the internet. You hear people telling you uh, you can get your small business and write off this and write off that and write off this and write off that. You're going to write your ass off into an audit. And that's what happens far too often, especially when you get uh, advice from people that uh, probably not credentialed out to give that kind of advice. And, and uh, some may be because some may be trying to just sell information or to get followers. But uh, you, you kind of go into a danger zone when, you, you know, you're reporting things on your taxes that uh, may be correct with doing it. But it's some, maybe some things that are missing with that. So you got to be very, very careful, especially when you get advice from. OK, and uh, the best piece of advice I can give you with that. Try to get find people that's going to give you the right advice instead of the advice you actually want to hear because you know it sounds good and this guy's articulate, this guy's smooth, or this young lady uh, has a lot of followers. Be very careful and in, uh, investigate people. I'm not saying the only the best tax preparers are people with college degrees or certifications, but I will say this: um, you do want to have people that you can probably look at a little bit more credential. Because, again, they may not necessarily be so quick to give out advice because there's some kind of recourse towards them just in case they're giving out wrong information. What I mean by recourse, you can actually call somebody and report them. Somebody that's just talking on the Internet that doesn't have any kind of credentials or anything behind them, you know, just an old way of situation. So that's just kind of a quick advice for that. But in the first thing. That, that one of the first triggers uh, for a small business audit is failing to report income. Uh, again, guys, you got to make sure you want to keep you want to keep uh, you have to keep proper books. Uh, I was asked today in regards to my opinion about people, you know, using QuickBooks and things like that. Uh, I am an accountant and you can try to do your own books, but never try to equate doing your own accounting books uh, being the same things you keep in a checkbook. If you're not familiar with it, I would just pay uh, a bookkeeper. Bookkeeper is extremely reasonable right now. I mean, uh, especially with software, you can get somebody virtual. You end up paying anywhere from 75 to maybe 200 bucks a month, which is extremely reasonable to take consideration. You're not taking, you're not hiring an accountant. You know, you, you don't have anybody sitting in there. But it's just something to kind of keep in mind with uh, 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 going forward because you want to make sure it's done right because you couldn't cost and not paying somebody that probably has a better eye a better experience with doing it that you know at the end of the day that twelve hundred or three thousand dollars at the end of the year that you felt you say you may pay double that um for representation back taxes penalties and fees so it's just something taking consideration or you can be in a situation where you can actually you know maybe shadow or pay attention to whoever doing your books for about six months to a year uh gain some intel gain some experience and then you want to take it upon yourself you can do it or like I mentioned, sometimes most small community colleges offer, you know, like a three to six month QuickBook course that you can take. You maybe even become a QuickBook Pro certified, but it's uh, Pro Advisor certified. But it's I, I would err on the side of caution of trying to do everything yourself because again, you 
when you get in business, you know what you do, you know what you do well. Um, you can't be the jack of all trades with, with everything, especially things that can uh, cost you the end. We start talking about accounting, uh, insurance, legal stuff. Uh, I won't be going on Google getting that stuff. You pay them little, pay those little fees with it. It'll save you a lot of heartache, pain, and you know, you know, won't beat your checkbook is, uh, is bad in the grand scheme of things, uh, just in case if uh, something does happen. The second thing is again, we're talking about um, how to avoid small business uh, tax audit with triggers. How to avoid those triggers to small business tax audit. Uh, and the second one is uh, large deductions and excessive expenses. Here's the deal with these large deductions. Again, you know. I know you guys see it all the time. You can write off this. You can write off that. You got your LLC. Get your LLC. You can put these particular things. You can get a, a, a vehicle. I'm just hearing the thing with a G-Wagon, $6,000 and stuff. And everybody's like, ooh. The problem come up with that is, how the hell can you justify the purchase of this G-Wagon, you know, that may be, I don't know, how much does the damn G-Wagon cost? But just, let's just say for explanation purposes is, Fifty, sixty thousand dollars, right? Regardless, let's take that whole weight aspect, which you can, because people look at the the one is the one seventy nine uh, of total expense that you can just wipe the whole uh, weight of the uh, the whole purchase price of the vehicle because weigh over six thousand pounds. The issue comes up with that is how can you justify paying for this vehicle if you don't have any income coming in, or on uh, <laughs> or any kind of revenue, any kind of business activity? How do you justify that, right? Not saying you can't because you have something called startup costs. But on the flip side of it is, then if, you, if the audit is triggered, they're going to want to see your personal bank statement. So where did this capital come from to invest into that? You got to be smart about it. A lot of times people will say, and you, I hear the uh, uh, people giving advice about you want to go on family vacations and you can put uh, travel expenses and stuff like that. That's all well and good. You want to do that if you're doing business like that. The issue comes up again. Are you making comparable income to justify you paying for these actual trips you turn it you submit a tax return for you know a three thousand dollar vacation trip you know two thousand dollar uh repairs to to a maybe it'll maybe be office repairs with maybe some things get done at your house you got all these different things that are listed on there and you don't have any kind of other activity as far as revenue coming in to justify it how is it done the only year you can get away with it for the most part is the first year because, again, you have those initial startup costs with your business, which ain't uncommon. I get that part. But we started talking about put writing off everything that's on there. Now you got this big old business loss, and then so you can get this big refund. I understand one thing about the IRS because I did get a, the example earlier six months to a year. The year don't function like that. A lot of times it's like a lag, maybe a year lag, maybe a year or two lag. And when you get the letter, they're going to ask you, to submit things that you don't know what the hell they are unless you've been keeping proper books, right? And, and it, no one wants to get out and nobody wants to get that phone call. But if you stuff together, you stuff together. And it is what it is from that standpoint. But if you're just writing stuff down and you're using TurboTax or Tax Act and you putting the stuff in, and if you increase the expenses here, and you see that little refund getting bigger and bigger and bigger, the more stuff you're lying about, Please, you don't want the problems. It ain't even worth it. It's not even worth it, guys. It's not even worth it. So when you start putting in things that are told that out of you know out of proportion or just overdone, you got to be realistic about that stuff. Because um, again, I know there's a gray area when we start talking about what's justifiable uh, with doing it. And, and like I said, usually it, it, that first year uh, is nothing uncommon to have some, you know. A lot of expenses and startup costs because you're new in business and getting everything together. But when you start putting in year two, year three to do this kind of stuff and you're not getting any activity and the money in, or it's minimal. So you're like, how in the world are you paying? You're not making any money because, you know, you're not making any money. So how are you putting this money? Uh, uh, able to buy this equipment. You're able to keep paying for all this rent, you know, all these particular things, you know. And a lot of times people will put in their personal expenses their apartment rent, their, you know, uh, their apartment rent, excuse me one second, um, car note, uh, car lease, things that are not necessarily attributed to the business, and it come back and bite you in the butt. And that was the well, those are the particular things I think a lot of people should be trying to avoid. Hold on one second, guys. We'll make sure everything's square on this end.
Cool. All right, good. Um, but you have to be very, very careful there. Be very, very careful because I hear it far too often. People telling folks to write this off, write that off. You can include this, you can include this. I see the videos all the time. I, if you're not hearing an accountant say that, uh, somebody certified again, I'm not saying they're the only people who can give advice, but those are people that you know they have some kind of recourse that you can call, uh, that you can uh, call back. I mean, a, a report. Um, so they may be a little, they would be a, a lot more reluctant to just give freehand advice because somebody has actually been credentialed out, certified or whatever. They've usually went through some kind of training where they can kind of look at not, not uh, holistic responses. And what I mean by holistic is understanding that um, whatever your situation and the next person's situation will be totally different because one person comes in with a certain amount of income, one person comes in with a certain amount of expenses, you know. This person has dependents, that person don't, and everything changes uh, depending on what the situation is. So I, I would just err on the side of caution with that. Just please don't get a, a celebrity uh, confused with expertise. Please don't do that. Just competence is very, very important. And I think in the, in the era of social media, a lot of people you know skip over that because this person is, uh, is popular. I think a lot of times you start doing some Google search, you start finding out some things about people. It may make you a little reluctant, but um, I'll bounce off that because like I always say, I'm never too big on really talking about other people's business and everything like that. But I always, you know, real big proponent of you make sure you check the people that you're actually dealing with. But those, old, you know, putting in all these particular expenses, writing these particular things off, and if there's no kind of justifiable revenue income coming in like that, that's a quick trickle. For uh, uh, to put yourself in position, and get an audit. Another audit trigger is claiming businesses losses every year after year after year. Listen, um, who the hell gonna be able to stay in business? You keep writing all these big massive losses, fifteen thousand this year, twenty thousand next year, thirty thousand next. Year. How, how, how can you how can you justify it? How can you justify it? You know, that, those are the kind of things that gonna be one of the first thing to come on. Hey, I appreciate you tuning in. Appreciate you tuning in. When you have those excessive, those losses year after year after year, you have to be realistic to just say, like, listen, this is not just going in a particular spot. It's, you know, it's, you know, it's being hubbed out or, or, or tracked for following years. So just don't think when you file your 2022 taxes this year that they still aren't, you know, gauging everything based off what, what you did on your 2021 and 2020. Why? Because a lot of times we, when you make equipment purchases or things that require some kind of depreciation, things like that, those have to be tracked over certain periods of years, right? So it just doesn't go away. That's still in their system, right? You have to kind of keep that in mind, especially if you have a loss because your loss can be rolled forward to uh, uh, future years. So especially if you're using, excuse me, if you're using any kind of tax software, um, that tax software is saving the actual loss you have and, and rolling it forward and applying it to the next year. So all those particular things, you know, you, you may not understand that because you're using the TurboTax or the uh, Tax Act or h &R Block software. Excuse me. You're just seeing the Q&A portion of it and then the numbers changing in the corner. Excuse me, but you may not necessarily understand the big picture impact. We I know a lot of times in the software, they'll have a year-to-year -year comparison. You can see what you did, uh, uh, like probably over three-year span as far as income, expenses, and things like that. Um, but the, the IRS is keeping track of that, and, and, and it's kind of hard to explain how come you, you, you're still in business with all these massive losses. Like, how are you paying the rent? How are you doing it? You only have so much, and especially when uh, uh, if it's like a single owner LLC or a sole proprietorship, because why your personal income is tied to it. So now they're saying, like, listen, this person actually was able to buy all of the right off all these expenses spend all this particular money and still don't make that much on their personal income you know to justify where this money went right and then they're not seeing any kind of retirement uh, uh funds or, or, or brokerage accounts that's being uh, cashed in or anything like that so it's going to ask where's the money coming from doesn't mean it isn't legitimate you might have got it from somewhere but once the artist starts now you got to sit there and explain so why put yourself in that position? Just got to think sometime, okay? You got to think. You have to think. Remember, proper record keeping keeps everything together. 
You just want to make sure you got your books together. You want to make sure you got everything locked in tight. So whatever you put in now, whatever you put on your tax return, you want to make sure you got some kind of corresponding documentation to substantiate. That's all I'm saying. All I'm saying. Please, please, please get out from the way of just looking at, you know, hey, I can write this off and write that off, write that. You have to be able to justify it because if you ever go through an audit and some of that stuff is found fraudulent, it can, it can be catastrophic for you. And you don't want to put yourself in a position where you spend the next two or three years, maybe longer, trying to get out of the hole because you got this big ref you got this big refund, and now they went pull this audit on you. Now you got to get all this documentation to justify it. You got to be careful. Be careful. I'm always going to tell you one way to do it. That's the right way. So again, make sure you got proper records. But again, those claiming business losses over year after year after year after year, it's going to be tough. I mean, again, remember what I told you. Maybe a couple of your lag in regards to them actually touching base with you. So you getting a phone call in 2020. I'm mean, not a phone call, but a letter in 2023 uh, in regards to your 2019 taxes. You don't remember that. You don't remember. And that's what you see. That's so much with people with the PPP fraud and disaster loans and stuff. You know, they're hitting you up asking me because a lot of times people just feel not stuff. I just want to get this bigger uh, loan or whatever. And then they get these letters. Hey, turning this form, turning that form. And they don't even know what the hell it is because at the end of the day, everybody was just playing make believe and putting stuff on paper uh, to get uh, to get a certain amount of money back, and they come back and bite you in the butt. So do it the right way. Do it the right way. The next thing is uh, S corp shareholder employees earning low or no salaries. This is very important, right? Because I let me tell you something. I've seen tons of videos on the internet in regards to S corporations, subchapter F S corporation. Here's the thing, theoretically, when we look at what a subchapter S corporation, guys, if you're not familiar with it, the thing with a slow subchapter S corporation, I'm trying to give me one second. I want to uh, put something in the actual uh, chat right quick. Uh, again, I'm Deontay Burton, uh, a.k.a. Mr. Short Dollar himself. You listen to the, well, it's not the dollar. I will do a live feed in regards to um, how to avoid these small business tax audit triggers. You know, these are the ones you need to avoid. These are very common for people to put them in, put a, to a place these. Um, a lot of them by accident. When I say accident, man, I necessarily know they may have thought of what they were right, um, may have heard they were right, or they just, you know, wanted to, you know, get a refund or get some, some kind of benefit from doing it. But if these are the, I want to go over some ones that I have uh, experience of knowing about from me being a tax. Uh, been in tax business, been accounting over 20, uh, 25 years, been in business over 22 years. Um, just give, you know, some examples of some, some common triggers in regards to tax audits for small businesses. And I was getting back to that subchapter S. We know theoretically subchapter S is just a corporation. It's just like an LLC. They're flow-through entities. What I mean by flow-through, when you file the taxes form, the actual bottom line number, revenue minus expenses, that profit, goes through and it just that form is reported to the IRS what was done on it and that uh, that profit or loss is dispersed out to uh, the different uh, owners of the LLC or the uh, S corporation because it's the flow through the thing the benefit of a uh, S corporation is that one of the benefits is that um, that bottom line number the profit is only subject to federal taxes well, the LLC is subject to federal taxes and self-employment taxes, or i.e. Social Security and Medicare. And a lot of times I've seen a lot of videos where people tell you, get an S corporation because you'll pay less in taxes. This is what they don't tell you. You have to have someone getting a wage in that S corporation. Wage. A wage is not a 1099 employee. A wage is somebody getting a W-2 where you're paying Social Security and Medicare. Most small businesses don't want to do that. Why? Because they're going to be on the hook of reporting that 941 every quarter and letting the IRS know we have employees and we're paying payroll taxes on them, right? But that's one of the things about it. When you have that S Corp, you have to have someone that is getting a wage, period, period. And when you don't have someone doing it, and, and the wage has to be in proportion to the actual money, you can't have... Uh, a business that's making, let's say theoretically, $100,000 a year, and they have uh, $30,000 in expenses, but you're paying uh, overhead expenses, but you're only paying the actual um, uh, officer, whoever the person is getting a wage of that particular company, 
a thousand dollars a year. It got to be in proportion. It has to be in proportion, guys. Again, like I told you before, a lot of these audit programs are set off uh, AI, artificial intelligence. You put yourself in a bad space. But those escorts, and this was a big uh, crackdown. They started uh, maybe, I think, three years ago. Now, a little longer than that because they were pushing it, maybe five. But they started pushing it hard, you know, probably a year or two before the pandemic came. But there were a lot of people, you know, getting into escorts. I see tons of videos with people pushing folks to get an escort because of that reason you pay less in taxes, which you do. But again, you have to have someone getting a wage, and it has to be a relative wage in proportion to you know how the business is doing. You have to make sure that guys, you have to make sure that guys, it's not worth it trying to cut corners. It's not worth trying to cut corners. But that is a big trigger. When that eleven twenty s for the subchapter s is filed, that's one of the things they look at in regards to the you know what it was paid in wages. Remember, ten ninety nines are not wages. That's just what we paid out the independent contractors. Okay. So they want a W-2 employee, okay? And someone that's paying your reporting quarterly tax on that 941. And most folks don't want to do that. Why? Because you find out very quickly when you start doing payroll taxes, the company has to pay it. And then you have to, you have to, what is not necessarily even what the actual employee is paying in taxes, the company has to match that with paying it. So you're turning around doing that for yourself. It's like you're paying double whammy on your, your taxes. Those rules, I don't make them up, but you can't get called foul on a, on, on the game when things don't work the way you want it to work. If you're going to do it, do it right. If you're not going to do it, do it right. Don't do it at all because it's not worth it with the actual headaches and pain that you're going to, you know, encounter with doing it, you know, or cutting corners. OK, so, you know, that's subchapter S, uh, seventh floor that it has to be a wage that and again, it has to be in proportion. OK, again, we're talking about. Avoiding small business tax audit triggers. Again, these are ones that I've seen a lot of over the years. Just want to kind of have a quick feed to talk to you guys about it. Uh, the next one is uh, this, you know, when people go crazy on the mileage law, they say that they drove a gazillion miles and stuff on their vehicle, but they don't have any kind of money to justify it. Like, how in the hell did you drive this much with no gas money? And that's one of the biggest things that, you know, uh, and I've had, I can honestly say, I had a client, this is, and this was back, way back in the end, when I first started, I'm thinking maybe 05, 06, um, I remember this conversation uh, vividly, and I'm telling the guy, like, listen, he's giving the mileage a lot, listen, man, this doesn't look right, this is what I had, now again, he's giving it to me, I'm being, you know, the accountant, looking over it and everything for his taxes, I can't do but take what you or what you give me. He said, no, this is this is it. So we wrote down the mileage. You know, I mean, he filled everything in. He submitted it to me. Everything signed. So I have what he's giving me. I don't I don't do the you know filling out figuring out stuff for you. So we got the mileage law, put it in, and he got a call. He got an audit from the IRS. First thing he wants to do is tell the people the tax man did it. First thing come out of mouth. No, the tax man get, did what you submit the paper. And it's that easy to show them, hey, listen, this is what he gave. This is what he signed. We're, we're, we're done with that. But uh, I, my thing then is my thing now. Again, how can you drive all these miles and not make any money? Remember what I said again, maybe the first year when you're first starting up, you're moving around and doing things like that. But it has to be in proportion, especially you start talking about businesses like courier, delivery, tone. people want to write all these kind of mileage y'all. But again, they don't want to report what we said the first one was all the income that they made. You got to be smart about things, guys. You got to be smart about things. Uh, how can I put it? It's kind of like, you know, when you're dealing with uh, maybe law enforcement uh, or judges or lawyers, like they've heard every story already. So you thinking you got a slick story or something like that. I mean, they've heard it before. They, they know how to. Uh, assess people when they line and things like that. And it's kind of like that, that's what goes on with the taxes. They have people in place that have seen things, seen certain things and certain things don't match up, which cause a lot of that stuff. And people just, I guess, try to play dumb with it. And those mileage logs you put in, you, you've done all these particular moving around and driving and stuff like that. But again, there's nothing in proportion to show uh, that that was a... Um, as far as revenue, that even happened. 
you can't sit here and just say you done drove all around the globe and you have no money, you know, to to to, to justify it. outside of that first year. It may be some things you may be a couple of years down the road where you may be doing expansion and things like that. You got a cash infusion because you got a loan or something like that. I get it. That's why it's so important. You got your books in place. So if somebody does come back with an audit and say, what is this? Hey, we got a loan from the SBA. We just got, you know, a line of credit. We want to actually, you know, increase uh, the size of our business. So that's why we bought some more equipment and things like that. But you can justify that because you got a cash infusion in. But you don't have that. You just have, you know, you're self-funded and things like, like most small businesses. Um, but you have, you know, a nominal amount of money that you made at your job. But you have the exorbitant amount of expenses that you wrote off uh, on your business because you know it. That's what it was making the most money when you was doing the data entry side of it on your uh, on your tax return. Got to be careful. Got to be careful there. Again, we're talking about um, uh, uh, how to avoid some of these small business all the triggers. These are some ones I've seen all the time. And lastly, guys, this was one that I mean, I, I know people don't think about it when they're doing it. But if you stop for a second and just think about it, you realize how silly it is. It's those rounded numbers, those rounded numbers. What I mean by that, you see a tax return, 2,000, 3,000, 5,000, 1,000. What the hell? Nothing is that. You know, every now and then you may have a common one, maybe like rent. You know, rent you pay, you know, two, three hundred dollars a month. So that may just be a rounded number. But for the most part, uh, you're not going to see uh items ended in zero or five it's just not gonna see that and i'm telling you you want to get out of it have a sheet full of those have a sheet full of them those those everything ending in the zero with doing it and, and can, can it happen will you have some expense in some expenses in zero absolutely like i said one of the things that's come right naturally you know maybe like a, a, a rent expense because you got the same amount coming out each month just say if it's 100, 200, 300, or whatever, 100, so it's 1,200 for the year. I get it. Uh, but overall, for the most part, you're not going to get rounded numbers, right? That's not going to happen. And people will have a sheet full of them. We get it on the financial statement, like, listen, man, we, you know, again, listen, because at the end of the day, even if, if you get audited, you know, our, the EFIN number from the tax preparer, that gets pulled as well. So now they're looking at everybody that we filed, all our preparers looking at trends from the EFIN, see if, if that's something common on, on our end, as far as, you know, the taxes we're doing and, or even like the preparers I got, is it kind of something common in regards to the way these numbers are flowing? So just like the audit you, they may do like, like a, a soft audit or, or investigation in regards to what we're doing. So I don't need to bring that kind of heat to myself. So that's why I can say and just tell you with me looking. If I got a good sense something don't look right, I'm going to ask you because that's the proper due diligence that any preparer is supposed to take. But you know, you're looking at like, hey, man, this is not right. And if I got a good sense, a good feeling that I can just shake that note and that, that, that this stuff is fraud or just something wrong, I just ain't going to take it. I ain't going to take it. You know, it's cool. I don't, you know, I want all the money I can get, but some money ain't good money and I don't need it. You know, uh, they probably want to perks being in business 20 years. You know, I can kind of, won't say it's about picking and choosing, but it's definitely uh, picking out the, uh, not picking headaches. That, you know, sometimes when you're so hungry, you can't turn stuff down. I really don't entertain that kind of stuff now. So you want to um, make sure that you're very, very careful with those rounded numbers. That's probably one of the most common things that started. Those get two things, those Schedule C's. I mean, it's already going to kind of just raise it up in a way, knowing that you have a small business. Okay. You know, small businesses are going to get audited the most, right? Uh, uh, they anything that's you like what triggers it, and then those rounded numbers, those rounded numbers. I'm telling you, okay, those two key things. If you got a small business, you use the schedule, you see everything legitimate, great. We're just talking about things that are, are common triggers to, 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 to create artists, okay. Using the schedule, C and rounded numbers are two probably the most prevalent ones with doing that, okay. Now, with that said, guy, we're gonna spin the wheels and talk about. What if you do get that letter? What if you do get that, you know, get notice from the IRS? What, what should you do in, in the event of an audit? Uh, number one, don't panic. Don't panic. Uh, and I know it can be frightening or with, with getting it. Hell, you know, I can just get uh, a letter from the IRS and everything. And I'm like, what the hell is this? You know, and it can just be like, hey, Mr. Burden, you know, just following up to make sure, whatever. Um, 
you know, nobody wants to deal with it, right? That's just one. That's one organization. You, if you ain't got to hear from them, uh, any part of your life outside of them giving you some money, who they want to deal with? Them? So I understand that aspect of it, right? But what I will say is that if you get, stop for a second, pump the brakes, and just try to strategize. Um, if you have proper, have your books in order, you got everything together, great. Uh, if you know you don't have it. Don't sit there and start wasting time trying to go in there with some you know, funky story in regards to this, what happened. I didn't have these things because they're going to ask questions that um, you're not going to be able to answer because they're trying to do those particular things. If you don't have it, hey, listen, you know, I don't have it or whatever. You can go from there. You can also get you like an enrolled agent or a tax accountant I'm, I'm not uh, to represent you uh, in regards to that uh, enrolled agent EA. Uh, they can um, uh represent a client or you know even file an offer and compromise where you guys might negotiate a particular thing hey i appreciate that thanks a lot for that i appreciate that thanks and you see met one of my goals thanks i appreciate thanks s turner i appreciate that thanks a lot um uh, you i'm about to lose my train of thought i'm sorry thanks a lot i appreciate that's on the the, the, the tick tock one, one of my live goals was met but yeah you guys gotta um when you get that letter from the IRS, just in, the, in, in case of audit, uh, decide if it's something that you know, like, listen, I'm just going to go there and they tell me I owe some money, I'll get it fixed. But if you want to get representation, tax account or an enrolled agent, they probably going to be a little, nah, they're going to be pricey with doing it. But if it's something that's going to be complicated with doing, you really, you don't want to get into trying to explain to them. Because here's the deal. How you doing, Nicole Anthony? You know, you're quite welcome. You're quite welcome. Um Again, you're dealing with people that they train to, to, to catch you in lines and ask for certain things. If you can't answer and respond to them comfortably, that's the kind of things can make things worse from you. And uh, they will let you know very quickly, look, we got everything. We got all your income information. We got all this kind of stuff. Just talk to us. And one thing I will say this about the IRS, and just we're dealing with them over 20 years. Um, could you get um, on his word jerk or whatever like that on the phone to deal with him. Yes, you can. But for the most part, you're dealing with people who just want to, you know, go to work, come home and just be done. I say all that to say you can sit there and just be straight up with them a lot of times and just, you know, hey, listen, I know what I'm in. Try and get it fixed and you can get it fixed. The issue comes up a lot of times is when you start getting these letters, you start getting some kind of notice, and you act like you didn't get it. And you figure out that hey, you figure say to yourself, hey, listen, I know I got something over my head. I know I, you know, owe them some money. I know that, you know, they 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 trying to audit me, but I'm gonna take care of it, you know, once I get paid or once these other things straighten out. That's not the way things are gonna work. Understand that they're one organization that can shut everything down. You've done it hard work <laughs> for two weeks and you're ready to go get your paycheck, and you got this letter, the thing say garn. <laughs> on, on your check stub. And you know, damn way well you don't want to deal with a garn because what's the problem with that? You know, you got to call the IRS and you ain't getting you ain't getting nobody on the phone 90% of the time. You got to call early Tuesday, Wednesday morning to get somebody on the phone. So during the whole time, you have your check garnished. You can't call them to get everything straightened out and you stressing like, I don't know what we're doing that. Stay ahead of the curve. Have proper communication with we're doing it. Okay. Stay ahead of the curve. Come on, time get a letter there. Probably give you some um an agent or somebody or a number where you can probably get somebody a whole lot quicker. But if something gets stuck, you might have to go back to the whole, you know, the basic line. Uh, we're trying to get everything taken care of. You know me, I'm always gonna tell you guys be proactive. And like I said, again, do everything the right way. I ain't gonna be sitting there giving you tips, write this off and do that kind of stuff. No, no, no. That's what that's why we've been in the game so long because we don't say a BS to people, right? So I just want you guys to understand those triggers. Let me rehash re rehash the, the list again. Again, we're talking about avoid these small business tax audit triggers. The first one being, you know, understating and not reporting all your income. You know, understating and not reporting all your income. Make sure, guys, that you keep proper books, proper records of the jobs you did and everything. Uh, I don't care if you did something for somebody, maybe like uh, a couple of weeks. I mean, for just for a couple of weeks, maybe a month, a day or two, because a day or two job could be a couple thousand dollars anyway. And you just forgot about it. You take your stuff to the tax lady or the tax man, tax man, and you forgot about it, 
right? You just you, you got these some Simon uh, financial reports going on, and that's what you think. You might be looking at your bank deposits or what you have, you know, that kind of accounting, and uh, <laughs> you turn it into the tax person. But you forgot who sells you. You forgot who cash apps you. You forgot what you got in PayPal. You didn't report all that. But those people are like, nah, we paid them that. They submitted 1099s. And they still, you know, everything's off because you didn't go to all the different channels where you had money coming in. At. You know, somebody made you pay your cash. Uh, so make sure that you have proper records to list all your income that you do have coming in. Uh, the second one is, what was that? Large deduction or uh, excessive expenses. Be very careful that again. We're in the world of I can Google it right now or go on YouTube, um, top sm uh, small business write-offs or write-offs for small businesses, and people are going to just list all this crazy stuff on there, you know, and it may be legit. Let me stop. They're probably legitimate deductions and expenses. They're probably legitimate. The issue comes up is what? Everything's still got to be in proportion. You can't have $50,000 in equipment, $20,000 in rent. Um, what, what's the one that everybody on the internet travel? You know, you got ten thousand to travel, and you just grossed in a couple hundred damn dollars. How the hell you pay for it? How the hell you pay for it? Right? How did you pay for it? Right? So you you sitting there looking at the the the, the IRS is looking. Okay, this person is not reporting any kind of interest income on their personal side. Like they just got this big money in savings. So where this money coming from? Then you, like I say again, that first year you can get away with a lot, you know, as far as they're not going to scrutinize you as much because why? Maybe basic startup cost you got a loan. You you doing that stuff over a certain period of time, putting yourself in a bad space, putting yourself in a bad space, guys. You know, again, they're hiring people to be scrutinized this particular stuff. So don't put yourself in a position where, like, look, man, I can't even explain or justify this stuff. Let me go through my little funky notes. And you. Uh, the other one claiming business losses year after year after year. Again, you got a business, you've been in business, uh, over sustained amount of time, several years, and it's always a massive loss every year, every year, some kind of massive loss. And remember, well, like I told you before, when you put in certain things on your taxes, especially we start talking about bigger assets, property, vehicles, things like that, and you get that depreciation, that stuff's still locked into the software. So a portion of it this year, another portion this year, another portion of it this year is it, taken out. And all the while, you forgot about it because you just answered the question on TurboTax. And before you know it, you get in that letter because how, how can you do this? Where is the money coming from? How in the world are you putting out all this money, but you got none coming in? What are you doing? How, how are you doing it? You may have everything. You probably don't. So just be kind of smart about that. The subchapter S, uh, Employee earnings are, are, are low or not even there at all. Remember what I said, you got an S corporation. You see the videos all the time. You have your you can your your pay less money in um in taxes with an S corporation because you don't have to pay the uh self-employment taxes. Totally right. But you have to have somebody getting the wage. Remember what I said, not just somebody getting the wage, but the wage gotta be in proportion. To what the company is making, you got to be in proportion. You can't be making a hundred thousand dollars and you paying somebody a thousand dollars a year in wages. Remember, wage is a W two employee you filing nine forty ones every quarter, right? Not a ten ninety nine person, a contractor. That's not that, that's not employee. That's a contractor. They want an employee of the organization. Keep that in mind, okay? Another one was <laughs> going to my little funky notes, everybody. Uh, that mileage law, totally overstating that mileage law, uh, that will get you in a lot of trouble. You saying that you've made road all these tens of thousands of miles, but again, we're going to look at the revenue or the income that the company made is very, very normal. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Okay. Be smart about that. And last but not least is the dreaded rounded numbers. Again, you getting all your whole tax return, 5,000, 10,000, 1,000, 3,000, all that kind of stuff. What they bill like that? What do they bill like that, y'all? Is that just a lucky draw? That all your expenses from meals, equipment, office supplies, uh, utilities, everything ended up being zero, zero, zero? It's not going to happen. So be smart, guys. Be very, very smart. What's going on, PJ?
See one of my sons are tuned in. Uh, be very, very careful of that. Because again, the IRS is like one of those, you know, things your your, your grandparents warned you about, you know. Uh, the trouble is easy to get into, but it's hard to get out. And again, it could be very, very hard in your pocketbook uh, if you don't do the proper steps. We'll make sure you, you know, you have uh, all your books in order and things like that. Okay. So I just want to share that with you guys in regards to um, uh, avoid avoid any small business tax audit triggers. I hope you was a, it was a, the information was advantageous for you guys. And I'm hoping everybody has, uh, has a, a awesome tax season for yourself and your and your uh, tax preparers as well. With that said. I'm going to open the floor up. So if you have any questions that are business or business related, um, you know, I'm here now. You got me for for a few minutes and stuff. So feel free to ask me a question if you got any questions. Uh, let me scroll up. Uh, this ain't this ain't that one. This ain't that one. Uh, ask uh, what are some new grants for veterans? Uh, oh, it's no really new grants for veterans. I mean. Uh, remember, theoretically, guys, I'm just be honest with you. Not, uh, uh, grants credit is all problem. You can go to Mr. Short Dog on YouTube. I got, I think, two or three videos in regards to different grants or federal programs in regards for uh, veterans. Um, you can go on grants.gov. But remember, grants, I, I think everybody has a distorted view on grants. And when we run across them, we're going to share them with you guys. Any kind of opportunity uh, for, for, for uh, they can give people any kind of or assist people getting any kind of access to capital. Uh, we'll post it on the video. But you'll see how these people post my grant. Grants are hard to get. I, I'm, I'm just be straight up real with you in regards to grants. Um, it's not like, you know, when the pandemic, you just say say your name and they've seen some money. It's not that many. Uh, there are a lot of good programs for veterans, you know, as far as getting into business and things like that. But uh, I would say you can go to Mr. Short Dollar, check out the, even one of the basic grant videos. But even we got several videos for grants. I'm a, I'm a disabled vet myself. So uh, I'm always looking for different things that I can help people that are actual vets that uh, they can they can benefit them with, with doing it. But I, I would definitely tell you that uh, you grants.gov. You can go to your local municipal. I always say work the inside out local municipalities, and with that being like wherever you get your business license at, or uh, your county, your state uh, to 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 check. But it's not that many. It's not a lot of grants for uh, men either. Uh, I got to ask that question because, um, um, God, I forgot. We just posted a video last week about, I think, a $10,000 grant for black women entrepreneurs. Uh, a lot of these corporations, they'll offer these particular grants, just like they have no ones for sisters. Um, and a lot of it is, they, uh, I think they're offering goodwill, but they're also uh, it's marketing, too, because they have people that are actually spend the money with them and uh, probably... Uh, the demographic of black females uh, and black female entrepreneurs spend a lot, not in a negative way, but it's just from an activity standpoint, uh, spending, uh, being active and doing certain things um, from a marketing standpoint, it behooves you to kind of have a relationship with them. So if they can turn around and uh, do that, that'd be a, a great, uh, that'd be a great place, you know, for them to actually put money uh, as far as we, you know, that demographic with black women entrepreneurs, I think that's one of the fastest growing um, uh, new entrepreneur group we're doing. It's not the large one, the fastest one. So if they can get on the front end, we have a relationship with doing it. That's why those particular opportunities are there. Uh, this ain't the one. This this ain't that one. Got Hello Alice. Yeah, Hello Alice is a good site, but Hello Alice, we've, 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 well, when we see grants come on Hello Alice, we'll post them. But they're always going. It's, it's, it's typically again. It's still only going to be one or two, uh, one or two grants listed, and they typically don't have grants for veterans. Every now and then they may have one, uh, where great veterans may fall into it uh, with doing it. But they typically don't have one for veterans. But I will tell you this: we did put a video. If you haven't seen it, we did a video about. I think it was December. The SBA part is partnering with the VA for veterans in regards to want to start businesses and stuff like that. And they're not necessarily giving grants, but they're giving a lot of assistance in regards to, you know, different classes and things like that. We're doing it. I've got the SBA loans. I mean, prior to COVID and everything, several uh, is a very grueling process. And nothing like the ones that it was given with the disaster loans, but they, it is advantageous for veterans to be able to get it. But I will always tell people, go to your Google and call your local uh, SBA office or Small Business Development, SBDC. Again, that's Small Business Development Office or your local SBA office. It's free. Your federal tax dollars pay for it. 
get you a counselor and let them know what you're trying to do. They have a big database. Uh, the SBA does with those counselors. They have that old database that they can actually help. Uh, uh, just like I mentioned, going to Grants.gov, they have that uh, uh, database to help you uh, uh, kind of scour through some of them opportunities. What we got here, Nicole Anthony, can I claim losses if if if, if I just reinstated my business? Uh, you can claim the loss if you reinstated the business and you claim the loss. It just got to be a le illegitimate. When you say you reinstate, if the business has not been active, right? That's just the theoretical. You tell me if I'm off base on what I'm looking at. Because the question is, can I claim losses if I just reinstated my business? Uh, the, the, theoretically, if the business has not been open, there were no losses for it to incur. But if you reinstated the business, uh, uh, and you didn't do any activity. You, when you say reinstated, uh, you maybe you, you, uh, uh, if you're talking about just more of a legal standpoint, the business license expired, but you still were doing everything. The license expired. You can do that. But if you were actually talking about a business that you haven't been active with in years and you want to put expenses on it, no, you cannot. No, you cannot. But if you were actually in business in 2022. You didn't pay the you didn't take care of the business license by just say March, the first quarter. Most most uh we're here in Georgia. Most council want you to pay your business license by that April, by March 31st or April 1st of oh, doing it. And you know, it, they for whatever reason may have counseled it by the summertime if it wasn't done, but you still were active in the business and then it came to fall, you got everything caught up, you got it back reinstated, but you still operating the business. Yes, you can. But we talking about that just been a dormant business, a dormant business with no activity or anything like that. And then you go try to uh, put losses on there and nothing was done. No, you can't. No, you can't do that. Let me know if, if, if I'm asking you a question. We're looking at it from the right perspective. I just want to make sure I'm giving you, you the right advice in regards to what you're asking. What we got, this ain't that one. Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay, cool, cool. I appreciate I was able to help you. Uh, but definitely go, go to... Um, Mr. Short Doll on YouTube. That's my main hub. Okay, that's the you know we we uh we on all the different platforms. The main hub is the Mr. Short Dollar YouTube channel. We got over six hundred videos on the YouTube channel. Got a grants playlist with over one hundred and fifty grant opportunities. But everything segregated in regards to entrepreneur playlist, finance playlist, uh, grants playlist, uh, small business, uh, speaking different stuff we got on, on the YouTube channel. But check out the videos. I mean, the videos on the grants playlist, the financing playlist. Uh, a lot of those programs. We, when I run across those programs, because I'm not, you know, I ain't getting any monetary for it. But, you know, we just, you know, want to be out here helping everybody. Uh, but uh, when we see it, we'll post the video uh, about it. But check out those actual playlists so again. Go to Mr. Short Dollar YouTube. Subscribe to the channel. Subscribe to the channel. Hit a bell to get a notification each time we upload a new video. And then from that point, uh, just go through the different playlists and take advantage of all, the, of all the great information we got on there. Okay, Mr. Anthony just responded. I have been active, but it's not, but it. I have been active, but it's not been active according to government website. The business license is expired. And can I claim the reinstatement? Okay, again, when you say I have been active, the thing that goes in with that, when you've been active, but just like, again, if the uh, license has expired, if the license expired, you was the, the business acting, you've been filing the taxes, right? When I say dormant, we're talking about different periods. Over several years, you haven't been uh, doing anything with the business. You haven't re been reporting the income. You haven't been reporting it. The license has expired. No income or anything been reported to the IRS. No, you can't. But if you go through, let's say 2022, and you did not pay for the business license to get, you know, uh, renewed, and then a couple months later it, it expired, then a couple months after that you pay to get everything reinstated. Yes, you can. Okay, and you put in a reinstatement fee. But if it's been a dormant business over several periods, you 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 can't do because again, it's, it's no business to uh to 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 do that. Now again, you want to start it back up anew. And say that uh, uh the, when you reinstated it, you didn't do anything in 2022, but uh, uh renew you get the business license reinstated. Yes, you can. You can you, you can write that off, but uh, uh, put things on there, and it, it hasn't been active and stuff. Now you can't necessarily you, you, you can't do that. 
Okay. Uh, and I apologize, you know, and, and I'm answering this the best I can with the information you give me. Uh, but I think I'm, I think I'm well on the right spot with that. I know you say you said uh, uh, I have been active. I have been active, but it's not active according to the government website. It all depends on the period that, that, or whatever um, uh, that it has uh, not been listed as being active. Because you being active, you being busy, you're not reporting you busy, two different things. Because, again, if you've been operating, functioning your business for a couple of years and you have not been reporting that stuff to the IRS or what you've been doing, you ain't been in business. You just been hustling, right? You just that's all it is. You know that's that's you know you know that's, that's just you know, keeping real with that. But if you've actually been in business and you've been reporting the income, and there have been some things that weren't done in regards to a compliance standpoint, as far as you know your 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 business license or being set up with the state, uh, you can always go you know put that stuff right off the late fees for the reinstatement. But you got to make sure you have some kind of uh, continuous reporting with that because again in the advent someone does reach back out to you and ask you hey listen what's been going on what you've been doing with the business and you don't have nothing to substantiate it just put yourself in a bad position it ain't worth it excuse me ain't worth it that, 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 that's just being honest with you it's not it's not worth it well, i want to do it the right way and you know not not the probably the best way not our favorite way rather you know we're doing it i hope i answered your question miss anthony i appreciate you tuning in as well um anybody else got any questions you got your boy here you got me here oh excuse me with that said um let me throw that up you guys uh i'm gonna put a link guys you can go to my my and i'm sorry on far as instagram and uh tiktok i don't i'm not we're not at the show so i don't have anybody you know moderating for me to put anything in the links and stuff so y'all please forgive me but you can't go to mr short dollar on youtube every video that i do have in the description section got all my contact all the contact information even the number to the office or uh, if you want to book a consultant appointment or anything like that all that information so any video any video on mr short dollar on youtube has all our contact information on the social media platform the actual uh my my uh, uh my accounting business, Majestic Business Services, the website there, contact information there. You want to book any kind of consulting appointment, tax preparation appointment, all that stuff is there. But I do want to share with you guys, I did open up my Mr. Short Dollar Tax Business course. I got the course. I started um, basically, in, you know, quick summary. And I do a live feed about the course later on in the week. And I've done a couple of them so far. Uh, basically, with the course, what we do is, uh, I don't teach you how to fill out certain forms, anything. I just share what I've done over the past 20 some years in regards to uh, how to create, set up, and run an effective, efficient tax uh, preparation business. I give examples on how to do it from a brick and mortar physical location, how to do it from a remote location. Um, my business exploded during the pandemic. Why? Because we were offering remote and virtual services four years prior to the pandemic using Google Hangouts and things like that. Uh, most people don't want to do it because they're like, what is that? What is well, what is virtual and everything? But when the pandemic hit, when everybody else closed, we exploded because we offer those particular services. Uh, but pretty much showing you from a marketing standpoint what you need to be doing year round to market it, market to your clients, keep client retention, create a referral atmosphere. Um, from an office standpoint, for the moment somebody walks in your door, sits down, processing, leaves out, maintain a relationship year round, all those blueprints are set up with that. How to get set up and even with you know the IRS and as far as training, things like that, insurance, all that information is given in the course. I put everything that I've done over the past 20 some years. I include all my forms in regards to intake forms, marketing materials, things like that. All of that included with the course. Go to Mr. Short Dollar on YouTube. You should see the link if you want to get into the tax preparation business. That is there uh for that course. Okay. Uh let me answer this quick. Yeah, you answered it well. Thank you so much. I appreciate you and your value, uh, value, value expertise. Now, listen, my pleasure, my pleasure, and I appreciate you tuning in. Uh, anybody else got any questions, family? Anybody else got any questions? Well, listen, uh, I appreciate you guys. It's, it's midnight here, and I appreciate you guys tuning in. I just want to run my mouth uh, and be able to help everybody in regards to some information. So the only thing I will ask you guys, if, uh, if you haven't, please share the YouTube channel and tell people about the YouTube channel. Um, I think we're over 25,000 subscribers on YouTube. We probably all together on the platforms over 100,000.
But um, we've been able, you know, to grow like that over the past couple of years because, you know, helping people and doing good stuff and you know, spreading truth and the kind of finances and things like that. So from the bottom of my heart, I want to tell everybody thank you. And I appreciate you guys. And make sure, you, you know, be careful what you're doing this tax season because, again, um, you doing it yourself, you hiring somebody, remember what you're giving them, your name, your social, your bank account, your maybe your dependent, same information. One of the, first, the main question we all get asked first thing, what you charge? And again, the cheap man can't afford all that spy well. The cheap man can't afford all that liability insurance. So I'm just saying, don't necessarily err on the side of, you know, who's the cheapest. Uh, get who's the most competent, whoever you go to, whoever you go to. That's what I mean. I'm not going to be no big proponent of come see me get your taxes done. If you want to get them done with us, great. But if not, I just want you guys to make sure you ain't going in the direction where, you know, somebody charging $40, $50, and you, you know, to do it. And they, they don't have that stuff in place. They don't have the auto protection. They don't have the liability insurance. They ain't got a um, security system set up, you know, to make sure nobody break in and hack your account, take your social security information or your your bank information. Why? Because they ain't charge no damn money. I mean, they're just being honest. And market price for tax preparation, you can Google this. That's usually anywhere from $300 to $500, it, you know, just market, depending on where you're in the United States. That's market. So you can, those things can be Googled. Anything lower than three hundred dollars, I will get the hell away from. I'm gonna be unless it's one of those sites where you're doing it yourself. But actually, a preparer doing that, I'm just giving my personal opinion because I just can't see how they could, you know, pay to have systems in place to protect you. That makes sense, you know. I don't see you can't. I, I just can't see them making enough money or charging enough to uh, have liability insurance and things like that. Okay, I'm not knocking anybody, but I'm just speaking in regards. You know, just uh, uh, make sure you you protect it when you're doing your stuff, okay? Well, listen, guys, I want y'all, again, I want to tell you again, thanks for tuning in. I appreciate it. I hope we get some great information, you guys. Love you. Be safe, and I will talk with you soon. Oh, yeah, tomorrow, um, what's tomorrow? Tomorrow, uh, the dollar hour will be uh, like we do every uh, a, uh, every Thursday uh, tomorrow show. We're going to be talking about, you know, and, and since it's Black History Month, and this is a show we did a couple of years back, do we need black owned banks? You know, again, that's going to be the dollar hour. I'll be at a Misfit Studio with DJ Lab tomorrow. But the show, tomorrow's show topic is do we need uh, black banks? I'm going to get my spiel. And, you know, and we'll have a call in going. So you can actually call in tomorrow uh, to the channel. So check out. We'll be on the different platforms, but I had the numbers uh, posted. You can call in and we can discuss it. You know, do we need black owned banks? We had a conversation in regards to uh, if it's needed, not needed. What's your opinion on it? How you feel about it? You know, I'm going to ask why. Uh, but definitely 8, uh, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time uh, on the dollar hour, we'll be talking about do we need black owned banks. Guys, again, make sure you tune in tomorrow. So you can go to Mr. Short Down on YouTube, subscribe to the channel, you can get it. But we'll still be streaming on all the pla other platforms as well. So y'all take care of yourself, be safe, and I'll talk with you soon.